I got a lot of questions about the twin point positioning for the S1 and complaints it's difficult to position round objects. It looks like Xtool heard our suggestions because in this update they've addressed that along with several other options. Not only can you accurately position round objects, but you can also mark polygons and lines, which means pretty much any shape object you want to position, you can. You're also not limited by only marking one type of an object at a time, so you can batch out projects with different shapes or make use of that scrap material that you said you'd use one day. Am I quitting Lightburn? Well, not entirely. If you're like me, you use Lightburn for pretty much everything laser engraving, but Xtool just released an update that has me wondering if I even need Lightburn for my Xtool lasers anymore. Lightburn has been the industry standard for most lasers, and before I get too far into the video, I do want to say that Lightburn has a few more bells and whistles for most lasers, but if you're in the Xtool family, I definitely recommend you check out the updates for Creative Space. Because I'm sure someone's going to say that I forgot to mention one of the updates, here is a full list of software updates that they just pushed out. All kidding aside, I'll briefly cover some of these in a moment. Creative Space is Xtool's proprietary software for their lasers. This isn't a full review of the software because there's plenty of those reviews out here on YouTube, but what I really want to talk about is the latest update to the software, which is version 1.7. This update has a feature that a lot of us have been asking for. Creative Space is generally known as an entry-level software for Xtool lasers, but all of their lasers are compatible with Lightburn as well. Creative Space is free to download and use, so if you're new to laser engraving or looking to buy an Xtool laser, I recommend getting familiar with it. Here we are in the Creative Space software, where you'll see your standard work area. You can connect your laser or just work on the files on your lunch break, so you can run them when you get home. Either way, you'll see a set of tools on the left side, some menu options up top, and some more laser-specific options on the right side. For this demo, I'm going to be using the Xtool S1 laser, but this update has also been pushed out for the other lasers as well. Let's start off by addressing the number one request for this update, round engraving and marking. I've got a set of these cheap ornament wood cookies that I want to engrave for our Disney cruise. People on Disney cruises are a little bit extra, so my wife signed us up for all of these random acts of kindness activities while we are on our cruise. One of those activities is picking random families to gift with stuff when we get on the boat. To mark a round object, you can position them wherever you like. They don't need to be in any lines or formations. Then after you set your focal distance, you move the laser to where you want to start measuring from, select mark processing area, and pick the circle and start marking. It will guide you through the process, but once your crosshairs are over the first spot, you hit the button on the front of the machine and move the laser to the next point. This can be totally random and it doesn't need to be in any position. Hit the button again and repeat the process until you've marked three locations around your circle. Then you'll hit the end marking button, and if you're done marking, you can hit done and go back into your workspace. Since we're extra, I'm going to be doing multiple circles at the same time to show you that function. Each time you're done marking a circle, you can hit end marking. And if you want to mark another circle, just repeat the steps of pressing the button on the unit. Now I'm aware there's a center finder option in Lightburn, but when I've used that function in the past, it's pretty finicky about the size of the circles. With creative space, you can mark very small circles without any issue. Once you've got all of your circles marked out, hit done and then go into the main work area. Then position your engraving within those circles and set your processing type. For these, I'm gonna be engraving them, so you can also use this to mark out a cutting area or a scoring area, but for this, I'm just gonna be engraving. Go through the normal process for your laser to engrave or cut and everything will be perfectly lined up. Finding the right place to engrave on a line can be pretty difficult, but with the line marking function in the twin point positioning, it's really easy. The process is the same as marking out circles, but you'll only need to mark two points. You can use this marking function to either find a line to engrave, or you can use it like crosshairs to find the center of an object. Here's a polygon that I want to find the center of. There are two ways that you can do this. Uh, you can select the top left and bottom right and then do the opposite with the line tool or you can select the polygon marking option in creative space 
instead of going around the polygon, you can cross over the same as you would with the line tool, and it will not only create a corner in the polygon, but intersecting lines. The polygon tool can also be very helpful in finding usable space for your scrap material. It doesn't have to be perfectly symmetrical. You can actually do anything from triangles to odd shapes. So you basically would come in and find a usable space and mark it out. So I would, you know, pick the various points going around and then I would know exactly where I have usable space to engrave or cut in. To put it all together, I created this test board with some random shapes. I've scored everything to create the lines and I'm gonna be going through and move all the objects out of their positions and mark the processing area of each. Then I move each object over the marking area and rerun the job. The accuracy of the marking is gonna depend on how well you position the laser. So as you can see, I have a few where they were slightly off. The objects I'm engraving over these is the exact same size. So where you see the overlaps is just because I didn't position the laser right over the uh, corners. You can see with this update, there isn't a need to create a bunch of jigs and the positioning can be way better than positioning with a camera. If you're using the new S1 laser, this is gonna be a huge improvement for your workflow. Two other quick things to mention are the AI features are pretty good with the software. You can go in and type something you want to create and have it generate some really cool images. Then you can tweak what you need and then even separate them into multiple colored layers. Like I mentioned, Lightburn does have a lot of great features that aren't included in Creative Space. But for every project I'd want to run on this machine, Creative Space does what I need. In fact, some of the features of the S1, like curved engraving, can only be accomplished through this software and not Lightburn. So am I done using Lightburn? For standard projects, I'll still be using Lightburn, but if I want to use functions like curved engraving or the conveyor, I'll be using Creative Space. I will say the layers option in Lightburn functions a lot better than Creative Space. With this software, you can still have various layers to control the order of engraving. Each software has advantages and disadvantages, but if you're just getting started with laser engraving and don't want to spend a bunch of money on Lightburn, this is a great option. Now it's time for some honorable mentions that I'll cover quickly. One of the updates that was pushed out is the ability to do auto snapping. This lets you align your designs perfectly in the center of the processing area, which works great with the twin point positioning. You don't need to eyeball your designs anymore and you can re-edit marked areas as needed. Also, you can set the fan's duration for your project needs directly in the device settings. The fan will work throughout the engraving and cutting process and then you can just adjust the time it shuts off to clear the work area. If you're tired of this beep every time you try to do something on the laser, now you can disable that function to make your shop quieter so you can enjoy a good podcast or something. If you're an F1 user, you now have the ability to do real-time framing. During framing, you'll be able to see the size in relation to the work area while it frames up on the base plate. For D1 and S1 users, you may have noticed the screen printer option in the drop-down menu. I'm not too sure on all of the functionality of this, but if this is something you're already familiar with, drop something in the comments and let me know how you're using the screen printing option. I'm not done with Lightburn completely. I'm someone who likes to tweak my machines and have complete control over the various settings. You won't get that option in Creative Space because they've tailored their software to work with their machines for 99% of the users who are beginners. If this video was helpful for you, please let me know in the comments and give it a thumbs up. I appreciate it. Bye.